Welcome to Three Inquisitive Kids. In this video, we will be learning about mathematical induction. Mathematical induction is a method that we, as, math as mathematicians, use to prove that a preposition is true or prove that a formula or an assumption is true. So in order to understand this better, let me give you an example. We want to prove that when you have 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared, all the way added up to the nth term squared, you get n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 over 6. Our first step is to see what happens when n is equal to 1. So when n is equal to 1, let's just test this, let's just test this out. We have 1 squared is equal to 1 times 1 plus 1 times 2 times 1 plus 1 over 6. That's the same thing as 1 is equal to 1 times 2 times 3 over 6. As you can see, this is on the right side, it's the same thing as just 1. And we know that 1 is equal to 1. This is true, which means that when n is equal to 1, this formula holds true. So we know that this special case, n is equal to 1, this equation is true. And we could keep testing when n is equal to 2, to 3, and so on. But, but there must be a faster way to do this. And this is where mathematical induction comes in. The logic of mathematical induction is essentially to say this. If when n is equal to k, this preposition is true, then when n is equal to k plus 1, this preposition is true. This is the cause. If when n is equal to k, this preposition is true, then when n is equal to k plus 1, this preposition should also be true. This is saying that if n, if when n is equal to 1, this preposition is true. And if it causes n is equal to 2 to be true as well, then if n is equal to 2, the next term, n is equal to 3, will also be true. And then the next term, n is equal to 4, will also be true. When you see n is equal to k plus 1, k plus 1 is saying, basically indicating the next term. For example, n is equal to 2 is the k plus 1 if n if 1 is equal to k. And if n is equal to 2 is k, then this n is equal to 3 is k plus 1. So it's kind of like a domino effect. If the first value of n, which is 1, is true, then the following terms after that are all true. It all comes down like a stack of dominoes. Our next step, because we already proved that the first term, n is equal to 1, is true, we're going to assume that when n is equal to k, k is any natural number, this equation, 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared, all the way added up to k squared, I ran out of room, just move this, is equal to k plus k plus 1 times 2k plus 1 over 6. And we're going to assume this to be true. Also, k is a natural number. And now we're going to build off of our assumption. So then, if we assume that this is true, it means the first half of our logic is already complete. When n is equal to k, this preposition is true. But then we have to connect it to what happens when n is equal to k plus 1. Now we're going to have to prove what happens when n is equal to k plus 1. When n is equal to k plus 1, we can rewrite the equation as 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared added up to k plus 1 squared. It's equal to k plus 1. We're just replacing every single n with k plus 1 times k plus 2 
times 2k plus 3 over 6. So is this true? Well, on the left, if you think about it, the term before k plus 1 must be must be k squared, right? Because it's k squared and then k plus 1 squared. And in the beginning, we already said that when we have 1 squared added up to k squared, it's equal to this. So this highlighted portion is identical to that of this highlighted portion, which means we can rewrite it as k times k plus 1 times 2k plus 1 over 6 plus k plus 1 squared is equal to k plus 1 times k plus 2 times 2k plus 3 over 6. So now we can simplify both sides of the equation independently and then see in the end if they're identical. Remember, this it will involve a lot of calculations, so be careful to not make any mistakes. In the left side, we have k squared plus k times 2k plus 1, 1 6 in the front, plus, you can use the perfect square formula, k squared plus 2k plus 1. We can multiply these two together to get 2k cubed plus 2k squared plus k squared plus k plus k squared plus 2k plus 1. And then we're going to distribute the 1 6 to get 1 3rd k cubed. And inside here we have 3k squared. So then we have 1 half k squared plus 1 6 k plus k squared plus 2k plus 1. Now we can combine some like terms. We have only 1k cubed, 1 thirds k cubed. And then for the 1 half k squared, we can combine these to get 3 halves k squared. And then we have 13 over 6k plus 1. So then the left side of the equation is completely simplified. And then on the right we have 1 6 times k squared plus k plus 2k plus 2 times 2k plus 3. This is the same thing as 1 6 k squared plus 1 half k plus 1 thirds times 2k plus 3. And then we're going to use a distributive property. So we have 1 thirds k cubed plus k squared plus 2 thirds k plus 1 half k squared plus 3 halves k plus 1. We can go ahead and simplify. We are left with only one thirds k cubed. There's only one k cubed term. And then we have three halves k squared. And then we have 13 over 6k. And then plus 1. So then when we compare both sides of this equation, we see that they are equal. They are equal to each other. This equation is true. Which means that. If this is true, it means this equation is also true, which means that this equation is also true. So then when n is equal to k plus 1, the original equation is true. So then if we have n when n is equal to k, this equation is true, and also when n is equal to k plus 1, this equation is also true, then it means that we have completed our solution because now for every single value of n this equation will be true.